Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. I'm coming to you again from Hinokicho Park where it's quite a beautiful morning. Uh, the autumn leaves are very beautiful and I'm sitting next to the pond where I can enjoy the view. Uh, like yesterday, the weather is nice and clean and clear and we have beautiful blue skies. Uh, it's quite a nice day to come outside to make a video. Uh, the subject of today's video is going to be another folding roll film camera or medium format camera. And this particular one is the Semi Leotax R, which dates from around 1952. I'll be listing this camera for sale uh, later on in my online store, japanvintagecamera.com, and my Etsy store, which is also called Japan Vintage Camera. If you're interested in buying this camera or another vintage Japanese camera, uh, please visit my stores. I'll post links to my stores in the description below the video. So the semi Leotex camera uh, was produced for quite a number of years, uh, from the pre-war era, through the war, and after the war, and uh, production ended in the 1950s. Some of you are familiar with uh, 35mm Leotex cameras, which were uh, Leica copies, uh, and very good high quality copies, and which are very popular with uh, collectors. Uh, the semi Leotex cameras are, are less common, and not many of these were exported from Japan. Uh, the R model is quite scarce, and I don't often see these, even here. And this is the first example which I've actually uh, uh, held in my hands. And as I hold it, I can see it's quite a high quality and very well made camera. I really like the style of this camera. It's quite compact and quite lightweight. Uh, it's small enough to fit inside a coat pocket, which is uh, a quite a wonderful feature for a medium format camera. Uh, the materials and workmanship are quite... Uh, uh, quite good or maybe excellent is a better word to describe them uh, The top cover has interesting style here. It's rounded, but it has these interesting little sharp edges which go all the way around on both sides uh, The leatherette is very high quality and it appears to be a uh, genuine leather rather than uh, uh, synthetic leather which uh, Was used by other makers and which is usually quite troublesome I really love the Konica Pearl cameras, but they use this synthetic leatherette and I, I, a lot of these cameras I find it's cracked or damaged and I usually have to replace it. Whereas the genuine leather, uh, despite these cameras being 60, 70, 80, even 90 years old, it seems to hold up better than the synthetic replace, or I guess synthetic coverings, which ironically were uh, thought to be more durable than leather. So uh, a very nice camera and it feels really good in the hand. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the features, functions, controls, and how to operate the semi Leotax R. Uh, starting at the top here, we have the shutter release button, which is located on the left side. It's quite interesting. Uh, here we have the shoe for mounting a flash gun. And uh, there's a PC uh, sync socket located on the lens. So you can, with a, a PC cord, you can use a modern flash on this camera. And here we have uh, a numbered scale in this window. And this is actually the focusing scale. The semi Leotex R features a built-in rangefinder, and this is the rangefinder window on this side. You operate the rangefinder by turning this dial here until the split image lines up, and then uh, you look at the number here on which is shown in the window, and you use this number to focus the lens. Uh, the rangefinder in this camera features a rather strong magnification, which allows you to get really accurate focus. So, uh, quite an interesting system. <clears throat> the center here we have the viewfinder window, and it's kind of tiny, but still quite effective. You don't really need much of a viewfinder for these. And uh, it might be a little bit difficult if you wear glasses or are wearing sunglasses, but uh, it still works quite well. And the small size allows for kind of a, a more compact design. And I think that was one of the goals when they designed this camera, was to have a pocketable, easy-to-carry camera. On the back we have the window for the film counter, and like a lot of other ones, you simply uh, count, the count your exposures by looking in the window here, and you line up each frame on the window, uh, I guess the paper backing in the center of the window, and after you fire you wind it to the next frame. On this side here we have the tripod socket, which is a standard quarter inch type. On this side here we have the film winding key, which only turns one way, the correct way, and which folds up to keep it uh, uh, out of the way. And here we have the button which opens up the front of the camera. So to open the camera, you simply push like so, and it's called a self-erecting camera, which means the lens pops out automatically. Uh, 
The semi Leotex R features a Kominar lens, a Nito Kogaku a Kominar lens, a 75mm f3.5. So uh, Kominar or Nito Kogaku produced lenses for a variety of different camera makers back in the day and they were very high quality lenses. Uh, and with very good coatings. Unlike some of the other lenses made by other manufacturers, the uh, Kominar lens is very resistant to haze and fungus. And if you do find these lenses which have haze or fungus on them, normally it's quite easy to clean up without any uh, harm to the lens. We'll go ahead and take a look at the controls and functions on the front of the camera. On the very front here we have uh, I guess the focusing ring which is actually combined into the front elements of the lens. And as I said earlier, when you focus the camera, you focus using the rangefinder wheel here with your thumb. And when the split image is lined up, you look at the number uh, next to where the pointer is. And then you would use the same number or turn the lens until the same number is showing on the pointer here. The camera is then focused. Behind the lens, we have uh, the shutter speed dial. And we have, of course, here's the PC sync socket. Here is the shutter charging lever. And located here is uh, the dial for setting your aperture. So to operate the camera, uh, I've already focused it. The next thing I would do is I would select my shutter speed and aperture, which I would say today maybe one one hundredth of a second at uh, say f5.6. Uh, then I would charge the shutter like so and then simply push the shutter button and take the photo. So quite easy to use, uh, very few steps. And uh, being this is a medium format camera, it's of course capable of capturing uh, amazing detail, uh, great resolution, and of course with film you get a lot of dynamic range. Uh, loading the camera is quite simple. You have a catch on this side here which you would pull up and open the film door. Uh, you would set your roll of film on this side here. You have to pull down. Excuse me. Uh, let's see. Actually, uh, uh, disregard what I just said, you don't have to pull down, you actually have to push up. It's actually quite a, a convenient way to do it. Uh, push up your uh, roll of film in this side and lift it over so it locks in place. Pull the film leader or paper backing across the back of the lens and feed it into the take-up spool and simply wind you know, the key here. And as I've said in other videos, when I'm loading these cameras, and especially people who are new to medium format photography, often when you're trying to wind this, the paper keeps pulling out. So sometimes what I do is when I take the paper, I will fold it before I put it in the slot here and get a, a pretty good crease in it. And then I will push the paper into the slot until the crease uh, is pressed against the, uh, against the film spool. And then I will hold it with my thumb and I will kind of push the paper along with my thumb as I'm turning this and once you get a couple of turns on it, the paper will stay put and then you can begin winding it. It's really annoying when you go to, you, you think you have the film you know, wound up and you know it's and the, the film spool is just turning inside the paper and it's not winding the film. So you keep winding until the arrows on the back of the film come across the center of the lens and once that is done you close the back door and you would lift open the window and you would simply wind the film until the number one uh, lines up right in the center of the film window. Now, as I said in other videos, as you're winding the uh, paper along, uh, usually there'll be something like arrows or small dots. And these get uh, larger or smaller or more distant or closer together and this warns you that the number is coming soon. So as the, the dots or uh, whatever they use indicators get closer together, uh, slow down your winding so you don't wind too far. If you wind too far you might get overlapped frames or you actually have to wind instead of one frame forward you have to wind two frames. So you don't have uh, one image overlapping the other so a little bit troublesome uh, if you wind it too far. So uh, be careful not to do that. So once your film is loaded, I'll go ahead and review how to operate the camera. And you're set to number one. Go ahead and pop open the front of the camera by pushing the button here. Uh, the first thing you will do is you will focus on your subject using the thumb wheel here. And so say I'm at uh, say seven meters. I will go ahead and focus my lens turning the dial here to seven meters. I'll then select my uh, shutter speed and aperture using the rings here. I will then charge the shutter 
and then I will compose and then take my photo like so and that's pretty much all there is to it so uh, I guess that's it in my description of the semi Leo tax R I hope you enjoyed the video uh, as I said I'll be listing this camera for sale on my uh, uh, online stores tonight so please check back if you're interested uh, I received a lot of vid uh, cameras recently and I'll be making more videos about those over the next few days if you'd like to see these videos please subscribe uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope you tune in again soon